Mind Board meeting of uh, May, uh, June 5th, 2014. Um, and uh, ask to look over the minutes for a minute and then uh, someone can make a motion to approve. Today the fifth of the sixth. Today's the fifth. So the minutes say that, that the uh, meeting was taken. The application was taken until the meeting of June sixth. That's today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can fix that. Easy. I'm just concerned that you might be tomorrow. Didn't you bring your stuff?
the, the house on, on the same property has become open and so you know it's a first floor deal instead of a second floor thing and we have our own building so we're hoping to move move our use over to that building and then you know kind of secondary to that is um, just kind of a, a, an end on the building that that lends itself to something else and then they, as I explained my mother just moved over this way she's a retired art teacher so I kind of put the idea in her head well why don't you go up there and try to sell some of your arts and crafts and things and Post post retirement hobby type of thing, and then she seemed to like that idea. So we would like to do that on the other end of the, the other end of the building as well. Joe, help me out with this drawing. Yep. Um, where is uh, uh, okay, yeah, you in bit. Let me. I've got one of the bigger pictures up there. It helps us. The rest of the motion. Yep. Um, well, briefly, I had it out last time. Some of them looked up at it, but some didn't. So this, this is um, the restaurant, existing, the okay, existing restaurant, and this, okay. you know, it's the same property. This is this is the house. You know, yeah. If you blind yeah. look, you spin it ninety, you can probably see it. In the so I'm hoping to make this the land survey shop, and then this yep. one, my mom's little craft shop there on the back. Um, you know, and our sign is already over here. You know. Our previous approval, we had we had said that we were going to come into this this entrance that's here anyways. You know, here's where our sign is, and you know, instead of instead of people pulling out back here to come up the staircase that was going to be to our office, they'd come in the same entrance, but they'd go left. Um, and what Jim's going to do is is block this the existing driveway for the house off. Yeah. Put a little fence across there, so. You know, the whole traffic flow was in his entrance and my entrance, and then they, people would pull in this way. Yeah. So, is there is there another curb? There's a curb cut here and here now, right? There's there's one here. There's 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 one here right in front of Krabby Bears, and then there's kind of a loop. And those are from the buying shed. Yeah. The, this you know there's a, there's another one that's not on here, and it's a DOT approved entrance that yeah. to. to he had for going up back to my shop and to the to his dots and so you know we have that entrance permit we we, we were able to shut <coughs> off the driveway to yeah, the house yeah. to, so people wouldn't get confused about pulling in, going out, moving around. Um, somebody grab this like, So Joe the, the edges of your drawing here, do, do those denote lot lines or no? Um, no, I, you know, I, I've got that showing the overall lot lines, and then I kind of zoomed in on the area that would be pertinent to to our use, just so you guys can see it in a little more detail. So, which is being blocked here? This is being blocked. It, it, it uh, no, right no. Way. This is this is the restaurant. The two restaurants are down here. Okay, so um, you're what it is? The, you're right. This is the block. There's another entrance already that was our previously approved entrance, and so when the gym here, he's anybody who doesn't know, he's the he's the guiding force up here, landowner. Um, so yeah, there's there's two side by side kind of entrances here right now. This driveway would be blocked off so that everybody pulled in this way. <laughs> come in to to our building. And how far along in the process of, of uh, reviewing the materials did you get on this last time? Um, everybody last time kind of wanted a chance to just digest it and and, okay. and take a look at, at at that way it's written. You know, I was kind of open. You know, the primary use is already approved on the same map and lot. I was hoping it wouldn't be too big a deal to move it over there um, because part of the issues we had before were, you know, the fire marshal and the planning board was concerned about, you know, fire hazards, us being over the kitchen and on the second floor and stuff. I mean, this, this move would alleviate a lot of that. So, you know, part of that was... <coughs> that was the big question was... Do we continue the conditional use permit or is it a new one? Ken didn't seem to, seem to think it made much difference, so whatever's the bureaucratically most convenient is probably what we should do. 
the only the only thing I would fetch up on is that it's a different facility. It's a different right. Well, that was the discussion. Yeah. Um, can can Kenny join us? I, I think I heard is people walk out there. And it's it's still on the same parcel of land. Uh, it's in a different structure, yeah. but it's still on the same possible land, which I think you're going to find makes it uh, uh, that he could most likely continue on what he was doing before. But it uh, wouldn't have, like, we did have the extra stipulations in the other building because of fire, because it was above the kitchen. None yeah. of that is an issue now. Now the only issues would be what septic and and entering and turning and entering from the road. The uh, the road issue is uh, was taken care of last year or the year before when I put my dock dock business in there. Uh, we're in the process. If you went there now and looked, uh, we cut the pavement. That driveway is coming out. We're going to put a fence. Uh, all along the edge, block that off. All traffic would have to come into the roadway going into the parking lot and then turn, uh, then turn this 10 parking spots right, right out front, right off from that road for, for the new business, as well as the remainder of the parking lot out back. Folks, just, just, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, you folks have determined that this was in commercial A, right? District. And, uh, did you start to glance at, at, uh, standards, uh, no. what this one? No. That was the question. Yeah. I think that's between the us Amending the current versus Kennedy. amending the current one, right? I guess that would, if that would make his uh, office work easier, then I, I would have no objection to that. You know, just stipulating that it is in a new uh, uh, building and it's actually less complex than it was before. So. Mm -hmm. But it's also a residential building versus like a commercial building, which seems like it, even though it's on the same property. Yeah, but there's no the residential is permitted and it's and commercial is permitted use with a review, so um, I don't see it as a you know problem. No, not as a problem, but it's maybe a little different. Ooh. It won't need the extra fire sprinklers upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> Being the kitchen. Um, Let's maybe on Joe's behalf here. Yeah, let's just go over and see. Um, um, what's the gross? What's the square footage of the? Uh, what's the yeah? What's the square footage of the building? Around an estimate on that. Probably twelve hundred square feet, give or take. Is it on the big one? That includes both both parts of it, Jim. Uh, there is a there is a it's a small ranch, one bedroom ranch, with a single car garage with a six foot eight foot connector to it. So that single car garage is where you're talking about the art studio gift shop. Um. Well. I'm not sure. Are you talking about the existing garage, or was the building on? Was no, the, one existing, on the, the existing garage is on the front of the building. Is it attached? It's not attached. It is attached to one that they're using. It's on the back of the building. It was a single car garage at one time. It's been converted into a master bedroom. Up okay. room. So then, and that's the space you're talking. Yes. We're talking yes. about the yes. yes. space. Yes. So, so what? The square footage of that part that's got the master bedroom in it yeah. is what? 
I would say no more than 1,200 square feet. Just for that part? And then no, for the whole building. The whole building. It's a very small complex. It's a one bedroom ranch. Basically a little breezeway, mudroom type area. There's kind of one main living room, and then there's this, this bedroom room on the end. So we basically be going into that. Those two other spaces, and then my mother here. This is this is Linda, um, Hi. and uh, she would she would be doing the arts and crafts and um, down in what is currently the master bedroom area. Because there's there's a natural there's a door on this you know, door and a bay window which almost lend itself to looking like it's a little you know, storefront type of thing. Mm -hmm. Is it already? And Joe, are you going to put the garage storage uh, building to any use, or is that? Um, we've still been discussing that. It sounds like maybe you know that that's a little too big building. You know, we might store some survey stuff on one side and some stuff for his dock business on the other side. We still have the storage for both of us. I don't think it's going to be utilized as a garage in any in any way. Before we started, I had asked Joe, <clears throat> excuse me, about the uh, access for wheelchair getting into the um, studio side. And I, I was thinking that it would probably be able to go in initially from the um, survey side and then work its way through, but that can't happen. So on the other side, he's pretty much agreed, I think, that that would be nothing more than just putting a little ramp in to be able to get that into. The, uh, the shop area that for the, uh, for the arts, uh, is ground level part of the building uh, permit that I have to get for a deck is conditional with a handicap ramp to get into the survey uh, office. Mm -hmm. The other part is at ground level, which can be entered with a wheelchair. With a wheelchair. Yeah, there's a little bump of some sort. I'm not sure. So yeah, well, that's that's simple. fixable. That's yeah. fixable. Yeah. some consensus on whether or not uh, there was there were some issues uh, the board has uh, considering this as an amendment to the preceding um, application that Joe had to uh, share on the gravity bay facility. Is that Yeah. What well, would make sense through his office? I mean, um, He's on the phone right now. Yeah. Does he have somebody in there? No. Um, okay. When, when he uh, when he hangs up, I'll give him give him a hand. Yeah. Um, uh, well, maybe we can just jump to. Uh, I'm on page eighty-four. In the, in the book 6.6.3, um, looking at application procedure for condition restraints. Right. <clears throat> and uh, have you filled out this kind of uh, submissions you need for what you're up to, Joe? Um, yeah, I, I submitted an application sheet with her, and then that was. You know, that it was just one page was fulfilling my requirement for an error in there, and then the sketch, and you know, the same thing. It's kind of a unique know, circumstance, so I was going to discuss the rest of you guys if, so if we're good to go, if there's more you want to see, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be. So this wording that you gave to Kenny regarding the change from one Yes. Yeah. 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 This whole property was surveyed, Jeff, back in 2001. It was surveyed. Uh, it was surveyed by Mr. Stanley. Uh, what a year, less than a year ago. Right, but there is there is this is the existing boundary survey in 2001 right here too. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, you know, for some other work that he needed, I kind of did an updated site plan when he was working on a septic system and things like that uh, last year. The question we were asking was. Um, are you okay with uh, 
because there don't, doesn't seem to be any serious objections that have been raised to treating this as an amendment of Joe's previous condition of use permit for the other building. In terms of your paperwork or recording of this, how do you want to handle it? I think I'd keep it as a separate one, detach it from the other building where, um, and just, just do this as a standalone. It would be cleaner and easier, I think. Okay. So the other one would be scrubbed, right? And uh, is there anything outstanding that Joe needs to get to you for submission? I'm looking at uh, uh, name and address of applicant and uh, copy of the deed, record of ownership, etc., etc. Uh, plot plan with some kind of permanent survey. Does it did that? Like either of those documents for that, and uh, fees, and uh, a sense from the board that it would confirm, conform to all uh, uh, parts of the ordinance. Any, all any new signage, or are you going to keep utilize the one that's there? No, the, the one that's there is conveniently located. Yeah. Yeah. And so actually, we we've, we've had people, you know. Pull, pull in that round back looking for us already and yes. you know, before we were even in there so it should work well now we don't we don't anticipate any changes for that and is joe is there language somewhere um is is it in this may 15th um message uh pertaining to uh, stipulations about the entrance the new entrance it does describe in there that we're going to block off the existing driveway to create a better flow of the traffic there. And the main 15th thing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's in the bottom paragraph. Okay. Jim, okay. is this and the same? I'll put that on here too, driveway. Same water supplies and everything else up there? No, it has a separate amount. It's separate. separate package as well. It's a separate entity from everything else. Has DOT signed up on that new entrance? Yes, they did a year or two ago. Yep. I submitted that paperwork. For Ken has a, that application. Yeah. Part of the uh, part of the ruling on that that uh, uh, when we made the changeover that we would have to do away with that driveway. Mm -hmm. um, and was it, is the fire chief? Isn't he supposed to do something? Isn't there some inspection that? I, usually it's just notification that there's adequate fire protection. Oh, okay. uh, it's an existing building. So not an issue? No, I mean, we can notify it. <clears throat> and the subject's going to be adequate? Yeah, I would think if anything, you're downsizing the flowage. I, I didn't do the, the, the calculations, but... Is that, is that an existing field? Or? That is an existing field, yes. Yeah, there was a family living there up until this point, so like he said, I think if anything, we're only using it park, you know, during the day and not much, at least on it, not much on the weekends. I'm not sure that she's going to move. Um, you know, you'd think that you'd reduce the load on that system, if anything. You know, it would be there showering and all that stuff that they were before. Wash machines, dishwasher, right? right. Uh, any uh, any notions from the board, or can we go ahead and uh, schedule a public hearing? We can much? actually. Well, you, we better do a public hearing. You're going to be converting the living space, bedrooms, etc., into offices, yes. reception area, whatever. The okay. Basically, in this building, there is a kitchen, living room. Combination in one bedroom and yeah. bathroom. Yeah. Uh, so that kitchen, are you going to be taking the kitchen out? Or you no, gonna... the kitchen's going to stay there. Uh, but it's all in one big open area. His offices, printers, and everything are going to be in the living room part of it. And his private office is going to be in the one bedroom. So single story? Single story. Any? Any questions or comments for Joe uh, or uh, Jim? Uh, can we go ahead and schedule a public hearing then? Or uh, uh, next 
next time we meet. We have to look at the criteria. Uh, so we can notice. It's it just yeah, we will notice and. Uh, It'll be in the paper. All this. All this we have to do a butter smell that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah we know if I down. That this the requirement for the public hearing is a shell. It's not a name. So. Um, and being on one of my. And is, uh, is that up to Joe to provide those list of letters? I usually we work together on that. Okay. Um, and then okay, is there any other order of business? Okay, it's just 10 days in advance. 10 days in advance. So it's it usually the paper, the specific paper that we use doesn't fall right, so we'll use um, a daily paper right. versus weekly. The website. Yeah. Okay. Are we sure we have to do it for this one? If not, would you just let us know what you want? That work for you? Yeah, that's all right. So, I'll come down and get you all the other stuff you need tomorrow. If it will help. Um, did, you have you, did you say you do have the deed, a copy of the deed, and all those other things that are needed? Um, thank you. It's all in my previous application, or I can give you new copies. Uh, one, one way or the other, I'm very flexible there. Well, it would be a different deed, though, wouldn't it? No, nope, it's the same. It's the same piece of property as the last one. Yeah, so you basically it's on the same parcel, but we oh. just take a new deed, just. Yeah. Yeah. And do we need, like, the exact measurements of the outline of the floor of the there? The interior. Yeah. The dimensions. the dimensions of the building. Yeah, it might be good to add those onto something. Yeah, just maybe a larger scale thing. Yeah. For both for both parts to be shown. Yeah, that's fine. Time. I'm, I'm not understanding one one issue here. The, the isn't the residence is not a, a lot of its own. It's, it's all one. one. It was. Uh, <coughs> The town combined it back in 1980 so something. Oh, I'm with you. Okay. Okay, thanks. I guess we're all set with you guys. Yeah, we have those couple changes. And I agree. Okay. Um, anybody know, got a notion of what that date would be? 1919. Okay, so. June 19th at uh, 7 p.m. We'll have a public hearing regarding this uh, application, this year's application. All right, and it, assuming that all goes well, I'm going to know to discuss this after, after that public hearing. Yeah, often, well, well, often we do. Should be, yeah. So unless there's some serious uh, tomatoes or something. Yeah, usually I certainly hope not. A lot, of, a lot of serious apples, but not too many tomatoes. <laughs> I like to think we have about as least impact as anyone can have in the commercial district. <laughs> Any, anything you're pacifying is the name <laughs> I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, John? <laughs> All right, check. Well, yeah. <laughs> what? What's the status of this thing again? Basically, these two submissions are it, right? Or one submission and a correct and a plot line. Okay. Um, do you see any? Have you had a chance to glance at this? Just a little bit. Uh, they've talked about it for several years, trying to do something commercial, residential. It's a good gravelly area. The soils are really good out there. Yeah. Flat lot, um, commercial zone on the front. I think we're all in the back. Well, and then it goes down to shoreline once you get further down in there. Um, does he show where the uh, uh, 
zoning lines are on this? I think they are. Yeah, they're all. Okay. The reason on the little map. Is he, is he entertaining any kind of split use on the lots that could be applicable to that? Or no. There was just going to be approval. I think they weren't trying to get specific about anything other than some potentially some kind of merger thing on the front lawn and then residential on the back street. Seems like they were under the 200 foot front on the lawn Yeah, there's some mathematical uh, errors. And then there would be set the setbacks on that front lot on 109. That would, that's a little different because it's in commercial A, is that right? Mm -hmm. uh, but they're not building at this time, they're just subdividing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So that, you didn't see any gremlins here that we should kind of bump up on the floor. No, the, the biggest issue is going to be 12th Street is the private road. Oh, yeah, we didn't know that last week, right? Yeah, didn't, you know, we didn't know what Yeah, he was talking was. about widening the road. Right. Well, we didn't know, the know if there was a road association, yeah, or what it was going to be over there. I don't, I don't, um, off the top of my head, what's involved in it. What's the issue that comes to the surface with a subdivision on a private road? Um, they were just looking at it, talking uh, of his availability or his rights to it. Uh, usually it's all going to stem if there's an association that positively grants him the ability to widen the road or maintain it as needed or um, the, the rights that he has for it. Um, The owner of these, this land now is Sontel, is that correct? Right? Yeah, that's the name of it. Okay. And the current lot line encompasses the proposed area and then goes out to the drop drops right down there. Oh, that's, so that's the whole time. the notice and parcel, and they try to break these three back lots out of it. Okay. So that would be a commercial, is what they were talking about a few years ago, trying to get a business there. Uh, this is a split lot there where they've got a little bit of commercial or residential there, and then those two would be residentials. Yeah. The land in general, fairly flat there, I thought. Uh, there was a hog back here, and I thought it flattened out in there. Oh, that's right. He said he'd give us a contour. He yeah. said he'd give us a contour map next. Um, where is he going? On a lot, he he has certainly rights all along his frontage. Mm -hmm. oh, what, I don't see what the controversy would be. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's usually just in the deed, depending on the rights that they have, whether he has the right to maintain the road himself, or if there's an active road association. I believe there's something there because I see it being maintained by a contractor. Yeah. Uh, and there's an awful lot of houses in there, so you, you'd hope there'd be some sort of a uh, formed association out there, and um, usually if he works with them, and the association's not mm -hmm. going to be too concerned about three more houses out of, I bet there's 40 in there. I think there is a road association. Um, I see it being maintained by a contractor, yeah. grading and, and maintaining the road fairly yearly too that they're out there maintaining it. With all those houses, I would think, think you would have to be between the mortgages and the insurance companies now. Yeah. But I mean, this subdivision isn't that old. In the 60s or so, probably. Um, so what what uh, questions did you pose to him? What, what did he leave with um, uh, searching for the answers for the private road thing? And he, he was going to nail down the frontages, I think. Yeah, yeah, there was an issue. Some of the numbers didn't come up to 250, so 
he blamed it on his boss. And he's going to uh, make sure it's accurate and come to the. I thought this meeting's about. So I just wait to see if they come back. None of them are doing it. I think there was only one that was under about eight feet. Oh, okay. This this thing. Just a little stand. dot thing. Yeah. 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 He ran out of space at the end. Okay, what's the second? Uh, this is a 2.05 week. And once again, this is Sawtell is the, is the applicant? No, um, Nevison is the owner. Oh, Nevison, okay. That's yeah, Nevison, that's right. Okay. Does that mean that that Parking, I guess, for the fair previously is going to be gone. Is that right? the area where you occasionally see a car for sale or a boat for sale? It's all <laughs> Nevison's property. It's, it's actually did the site walk for the lunch truck there yeah, ten years ago. So uh, that was on Nevison's property also. Which is really good frontage for a commercial business. High traffic flow, good state road. Um, you're on where everyone's funneled and is headed towards Sanford already. So, mm -hmm. be good homesteads for avid fair growers. So if they call again, we'll get them on an agenda and uh, go from there. Yeah, I mean they could turn up the next week. Yeah. yeah. And we just got to get familiar with it. Uh, yeah, we'll take it step by step from there. Um, well, the business, um, we'll wait until uh, Chip is back with us to do anything with the stormwater management subcommittee unless somebody has some uh, stormwater. Oh, one thing we should point out with that, just if, if some of you folks are wading through that, um, that we've talked about, and it might defuse some of the um, uh, discussion on that, maybe negative. Um, we have talked very briefly as a threesome or as a foursome um, about um, breaking this document up a little bit and putting some of it, uh, particularly the segment dealing with redevelopment. I couldn't tell you what page it's on now, but maybe just Gavin. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm um, on page 11 on the February 2.12 document. Um, we were thinking of putting that because it's applicable only to large-scale developments, somehow folding it into a site plan review section. Which, which page are you looking at then? Um, let me get up to the current, the current uh, on the May 5th, 2014 document. Um, Thought it might be good to maybe break it up a little bit. 
so, and you'll see also that some of the language in there is repetitious of existing language in the ordinance, and, and we may have to do a little housekeeping and pruning on that behalf as well. Just, uh, you might, as you're going through it, uh, you might get the sense of, of that, that makes some sense in terms of the size of the document and maybe some editing that needs to be done on. So, looking at page 12 on the main page. Yeah. 2014, just off the top of my head, where number eight says sizing and design of infiltration recharge testament and practices should be established based on criteria in either the LID guidance manual or the main stormwater best management practices manual. Don't you want to insert the word most current or something like that in there? Yep. You're on page. Page 12. Page 12. And what's, this, what's the citation again? Number 8. It just seems like you ought to reference the most current main stormwater best management practices manual rather than. I'm not sure it makes a huge difference the way they're written. Because they're just generic guidelines. So yeah, I know, but they're they... not really dated. I mean, it's not data that we're using, it's ideas. I'm, I'm... It might work. I mean, I don't care if we. Well, I'm just saying, that, you know, if you're going to reference a document, that, that document could be substantially different than 15 or 20 years ago. Um... Okay. Would you find me that one more time? I, I'm not finding it. I'm it's just not in the redevelopment part. It's on page 12, 8 in parentheses, par paragraph 8 in parentheses. I'm on page 12 in the two th May 5th, 2014. Yeah. Up the top right. it says 8. At the top of the page, there's an 8 in parentheses. There's no 8 on my page. There's a 9. It's above the 9. Okay. Oh, that's on page 11 in my document. But that's okay. Uh, to sizing and design. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. It just. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, isn't that, wasn't that one of the big questions was being able to reference, if you're referencing a document? Yeah, we do that kind of as a matter. Yeah, yeah I, well, I think the big deal when we were talking about the most recent was when we were talking about the phosphorus loading. But these documents don't contain that information. These just kind of describe the, uh, <clears throat> the various the, the gardens you can use, the French drains, the this, the that. Um, at the last meeting, did you folks talk about um, how we're going to uh, attack this? Should we do it in our normal manner of taking a uh, um, Three or four pages of a, uh, a meeting and uh, divvy it up like that. Or? Maybe everyone should read it through once. Yeah, read it through once and then, but I, um, just so as not to get too bogged down in the thing. And uh, it should be thrown away. That's that is the way we usually do it, right? Take it. Take it piecemeal and mm -hmm. and uh, oh, some of the bites of this are going to be more filling than others. Um, so, so we've got two editions here. One is the February second, two thousand twelve, and then the May fifth, two thousand fourteen. And that should say parentheses V six. V six. Yeah. And, the reason for that is, uh, is that we, we just wanted you to have uh, to see the the um, development of it from where where the planning board left off, you know. um, and uh, there there weren't real large wholesale, wholesale changes. There were more for clarity generally and. Uh, uh, our biggest project was trying to get um, consensus on some meanings of things sometimes, and uh, I think.
think we did pretty well in getting the landing on the, you know, a common agreement there. So far, the only real changes that have been made have been in the ap applicability section. But it kind of spans into, uh, what was the other section that it goes to? No facility to, let me jump to, um, uh, physics.
was born because of bouncing off this LID application form. Uh, does everybody have this, I guess? I think so. But, all right, sure. Uh, and what I, th in a nutshell, what I think we did was, um, in the application form, it talks, it uses some state wording that Jen Jesperson changed. She, she used, um, and correct me if I'm wrong here, just she was using, um, what is the, uh, the two thresholds of disturbance? Oh, incidental, non-incidental? Yeah. She was using incidental for um, where the state uses basic, which is the lower threshold of disturbance. And she was using non-incidental where the state uses alternative. And we had to have conformity in our language. So what we're going to propose to Ken, just as a, as a sample submission of how it might work, uh, he's going to have to be the author of this thing, but of the, of, the, of the application. Well, it's going to be an application form. Um, uh, just so there's conformity of language between the document and the application. Um, Though that wording in the application would be, the proposed application would be changed to um, basic would become incidental, uh, the lower threshold of disturbance, and alternative would be non incidental, the high threshold. And you'll see if you glance at that, that it seems to flow pretty good.
there was a, a, it went all the way up to Superior Court or Supreme Court, and there was a, a judgment made that you cannot claim hardship if the the lowest the lowest bar for for um, obviating the claim of hardship is the ability to create an individual private campsite on the lawn. Thirty years ago, <laughs> that wasn't here. Yeah, but that wasn't here. Um, the thought being that if you, if you you could not claim that your use of the lot was completely null and void um, and ask for an abatement or whatever then if you were still uh, able to devise an individual private cancer uh, um, um, well, would you poke that around with Jen and somebody upstairs so that, uh, if, if this ever comes across our desk again I know this is going to be one of the things that we'll have to get clear on and uh, <clears throat> uh, I don't know. I, the only place I would turn to for an answer would be Southern Main Regional Plan quickly. That might cost us some money. <clears throat> um, anybody else have anything for? Discussion tonight. Um, motion to adjourn. Second. 